We have some substitutions, so do I have a motion to? All right, we have a first by Mr. Gines, second by Mr. Lawrence. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Five zero with Dixie and Kenny out of the room. To our policy agenda, we're removing 4F resolution rescinding resolution in support of legislation for low speed vehicles. We're removing 4G resolution in support of private le legislation for same. To our consent agenda, we're substituting 5AA, the exhibit. We're adding the exhibit to that. And we're also adding 5FF resolution to approve fuel access services um, for use by city departments. All right, we have a first by Mr. Lawrence, second by Mr. Gaines. Any discussion? All in favor? 6-0. All right, now we'll move to the presentation agenda, mayor's report. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone here today and, and uh, really don't have a lot to report on other than, you know, we, we're plugging away with getting things done as far as uh, uh, recovery of uh, Zeta expenses as well as COVID. We had a couple of conversations with some of the council regarding COVID and things that are needed to be done. And, and uh, I think one uh, one number that we continue to monitor is, is uh, uh, hospitalizations. And I think, you know, uh, we're all been touched by COVID now more than ever, and it's at, it's, uh, it, it's the top of the list on everything. Uh, I think the governor and uh, some of the things that we moved on uh, with regarding the Coliseum and the ability to get these vaccinations out is, is, a, is a pretty good deal. And, and uh, I'm thinking we plug away three good months, four good months, I think this will be behind us and uh, or at least going on the spiral where we can plan to get back to normal. Uh, even these council meetings, I think we had talked about limiting if you have business at, at the council meeting being here, otherwise the YouTube channel and the, uh, the uh, joining and uh, listening to the uh, meetings we have on the internet is a, is a big positive thing. But uh, to uh, limit our exposure in our family and friends and loved ones, we need, that's the utmost in our, uh, you know, in our minds to let's get this thing back to normal. It's gonna take everybody cooperating both uh, in doing business and, and uh, uh, just taking care of one another. So the mask and, and those kinds of things are still high on our agenda. And uh, you know, we're, we're prayerful and hopeful that we'll get this thing behind us sooner than later. Uh, and that concludes my report, Mike, I think. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, we do not have any departmental reports, so we'll move to council reports. We'll start with Mr. Tisdale. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Welcome back. Glad Good to, to have here. you back. Um, if I could request that we take up, uh, we had tabled the fireworks ordinance last time since you were not here. Um, and if we could just be sure it's on next week's agenda so we can take it up again and uh, deal with that issue. Also, I'd like to thank Jonathan Kaiser who's in the audience today, and he's the RPR, which is the project representative. I can't remember, I can never remember what the first R stands for. 
But anyway, uh, he, he oversees or manages, I guess, the debris hauler, and I've just found him to be very, very responsive, and I, appreci I appreciate that. Thank you, Jonathan. I'd also like to thank Major Ron Lesnar. He's not here today, but he's retiring. It's on the agenda today, and, and he, was, uh, he did a terrific job was at any Ward 5 meeting that I requested. I think his, one of his primary responsibilities was the traffic plan for events the last couple of years, which would age anybody, I guarantee you. Uh, but he was always very supportive and, and always shared information and took questions. Um, I don't know if the administration, I've mentioned this before, at some point I, I really think we need to schedule a workshop with the Department of Revenue dealing with short-term rentals. They had, they had made the offer that they would do that and whatever that might be lined up, and I'm thinking primarily for realtors, realtor associations, and anybody in the general public who's considering operating short-term rentals so they understand what all the implications are, particularly on taxes and fees and so forth and the, the documentation that's required. Uh, and as I said, it'd be great if, if it was recorded by public affairs or, or somebody just so that that video would always be available. Mr. Creel, there, there's a discussion on the Planning Commission. Is it a workshop? On, doesn't it relate to short-term rentals this Thursday? Right, and that's agricultural, agricultural restricted where it's forbidden, and I think the limited business. So, but that's this Thursday at the Planning Commission meeting, right? And it's it's a workshop. Yeah. Um, but I'm just thinking that would be very helpful, and if they're willing, if the Department of Revenue is willing to offer that at no cost, we should take advantage of that. I think it's to everybody's benefit. Um, the last thing is, I, I've noticed on Facebook particularly, but I've had a couple of questions from folks, or a question from folks. They go out to dine at a restaurant, and employees are not masked. Some or all of the employees aren't masked, or the patrons who come in aren't masked. And I know the governor's mask mandate has been extended, and as, as I recall, the governor said it's pretty much the local authority's responsibility to enforce this mandate. So if folks have a concern or a complaint, how do they proceed with that, or what, what can we do, or is there something that we're doing? How, how do we deal with this issue? What, what kind of response can we put out to the public? Uh, go, Mike. Yeah, that helps. Is what? It, <laughs> Hello? Can you start over again? Is it, is it community development or is it the police? You have to follow the trail back to how, how enforcement would take place. I mean, community development would come in, would they, what would they do, give a, t give a ticket to the restaurant? That wouldn't make, do anything to the people. Or would the police come in and give them a ticket for doing what, for violating what law? It's a, it's a troubling problem we have. It really, the answer really starts with the person who's upset about not seeing masks in the restaurant saying such to the restaurant owner or to whoever the server is. But if they feel like they've got a, they need us to enforce it, the answer really is the police department. But, you know, um, we, well, we're, we're, kind of, we're kind of busy to be enforcing mask rules. Well, it's almost in the same vein with the 11 o'clock uh, alcohol serve. I mean, it really has put a, a crunch on what we can do or who will do the things. You know, we know there's mandates with the uh, uh, alcohol and, and, and bars and, and uh, as well as, you know, masks, but we're depending on people to cooperate and use common sense to, to help. And we just got to hang tight with uh, what we're doing for another four or five months, and I think things will relax, but we, there's a, definitely an issue on how we can, you know, enforce or, or uh, encourage, uh, more than encourage, I guess, 
the use of these masks you know, by your employees and folks that have come in and out of your restaurant? No so, answer. We don't have a no answer exactly. So it's if, if it's dining time, we're after, after hours, a call to community development won't help other than they'll go back at some later date or a later, later time. I call the police department. I would say the police department would be happy to respond if they are not otherwise occupied somewhere else doing something more important. So again, I think, I, I think it all starts with the, the person that's upset and the people they're upset, upset with to work it out. Yes, ma'am. It's one thing encouraging to wear masks, but I think we need to be very careful when you're trying to encourage constituents to be mask police and then confront other constituents. And it's just, I think you need to be very careful. I agree. Ones that agree in the mask, ones that don't, you're encouraging them to, you know, step in and be the mask police. And I mm -hmm. think that's, you know, you be, be very careful. Well, it just, it just seems to me that we're, we're punting on the issue. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is an issue that needs to be addressed in some manner. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we, can't, we can't do anything about testing, COVID testing, uh, except for employees. We can't do much about contact tracing. We do what we can with the city employees. But it costs you nothing to wear a mask to protect mm -hmm. yourself or others. And it just seems like if... Uh, if we leave everybody up to, uh, you leave it up to their good sense and uh, their acumen as business people, we don't see that happening now and nothing's going to change unless there is some sort of consequence or follow through. And it may be, I think, that the business owner is ultimately responsible if his or her employees aren't masked. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't dine out much mm -hmm. these days, if at all. Most folks probably don't. I, w I would assume, but if you're out there, I think you should be masked. That's why the governor has a mandate. The governor's punted the ball to us. I think we need to come up with some sort of response or procedure that if this is the case, here's who you contact. Now, as to what, what the consequence is, I don't know if that's something we have to discuss. I don't know if that's something already on the books. It may be nothing more than a warning and the next time there's got to be a consequence because there's always somebody who's going to push the envelope. I've said all I wanted to say on the matter, and folks who've asked me that question, if, if they want to know how, how we're addressing that, maybe they'll see today's video. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Ms. Newman? Mr. Lawrence? Uh, back, back to the debris. The people that have this piled around, they have to call in addresses, or they go on sweep the streets again, like, say, Wilkes Avenue, Howard Avenue, or we have to just call in certain numbers if they have debris in front of it. For if the contract that's remaining. Public Works Department to the community, um, the, to uh, the, the call number that we advertise in the B Mail and the B News, that'd be the place to call. And they will contact the contractor if it's a contractor issue or if it's a, it's a Biloxi municipal issue, then we'll have to deal with it ourselves. I mean, last last week we picked up hundreds of tires, and I can't ask the uh, contractor to pick those up. Those calls come in. We, we see the tires, or people call us about them. So the, the, the play, if, I've, I've sent to each of you uh, the, key, the, chart, the list of the, the debris piles that we know still exist, and we're going after those. If you see other debris, or some of your constituents see other debris, have them call that number. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the number that answers in public works, if you will, the trouble call number. And just say, well, there's a debris pile in the corner of so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, or so-and-so address, please, please put it on your list. Please there's no it. doubt when this week is over, there'll still be some debris piles out there. They're, they're, they're gonna be our problem to deal with with our own forces and our own trucks. And that's, there's probably always debris piles out there. So we have to go back to what we did before, Pelican Waste and uh, in our Public Works. works. Right. Okay. So they, they pretty much finished. Yeah. The, we have two operational grapple trucks right now, one north and one south of the bay, that, that can supplement the, uh, the other 
You know, and, and you know what we've got going on, Councilman, and you, we've talked about it. There's a lot of people out there just dumping junk out there, dumping chairs and sofas and refrigerators and gas grills. And I mean, let me let me repeat that number. We're talking about tires, you know, every on a weekly uh, directors meeting, we have a report, and Billy Ray provides usually 50 to, to 80 tires. The last mo Monday meeting was 550 something tires that they picked up. It's a lot of tires, so, you know, and. Uh, that's just typical of what we're we're facing, but um, you know that's you know usually that's that's a whole year's worth of tires mostly. But this has happened in one week. If I had one thing to add to the budget next year for public works, it would be to put at least one additional truck on the street that uh, with a grapple that go around and pick stuff up because otherwise we're going to start looking pretty junky. I think. My main concern was uh, the tree limbs in it. And the rest of the stuff we'll have to do ourselves. Mm -hmm. But if they not picking up anything else, then we'll have to address these addresses through the city or Pelican Voice. That's why we're just trying to make sure we, you know, let the people know what we're doing. It's not going to stop. We'll still clean it up. It'll just be Bloxy and Pelican Voice who we pay to do this. Now, I'm, I'm with Paul on the short term rules. I need to think of, we need to have some type of meeting. And I'll tell you why because Bloxy's still not getting the money they should be getting from these things. I might pay any uh, short-term loan. They live somewhere else. They file there. We're not receiving the money. We, if we're going to do short-term loan, then Bucks and need to at least receive the money that they're supposed to be getting. And right now, we're not getting it. They fight for everything we do. If people have offices in Florida, wherever they are, they live in North Carolina, that stuff filed there. It's not filed in Mississippi. And that's the problem we're having. So, I mean, definitely we need to do something to follow up on that. And, you know, if you all are going to favor short-term loans, well, by God, the Bloxy needs to get the money they're supposed to get from short-term rentals. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Deming? Mr. Mike, um, Neil Schaefer's group, I want to give them kudos. They did a great job coming out to North Country Cup Lane and cleaning up the piles of debris when we called them. They were Johnny on the spot, so to speak, I guess. Um, 2309, Mr. Creel, on North Country Club Lane. I don't know, uh, I think we sent over a request to Craig. Just want to see if I can get some input from you on how to resolve the issue with houses that are dilapidated in yards that are, are not a, um, taken care of. If you'll grab the mic. Well, once you, once you call it into us, you know, we'll go out there and check it. If there's a structure there that's dilapidated, then we'll get a case started on it. If the, uh, there's trash and debris in the yard, we'll start a case on both of them at the same time. If it's something where we're dealing with an owner that we can't get any response from, uh, instead of trying to work it through court, we'll just bring it to the city council and uh, get a resolution. All right, there's that note that, that I just gave you, the 2309. 2309, I wrote it you down. Have someone go out there, you know, talking to her, I've spoken with her a couple of times, really nice, she's elderly. I think she just can't maintain the property, and I don't want to throw her under the bus, but if you go out, it's, it's just, it's deteriorated over time, the, okay. the, the quality of maintenance of that property, and I don't know, luckily for me in my ward, we have great residents, and I haven't had to face this, mm -hmm. this situation. Um, but we, this one, I think, does need some attention. We've, we've run into a couple of cases like this, and sometimes when we have a true hardship, like we had one in, in court recently, what we'll do is contact Back Bay Mission okay. and, and see if they can help them out too. So, Okay, last but not least, where do we stand on the um, issue with boats, RVs, and things like that in front of homes? I know we've wrestled with this, this uh, ordinance for a long time, but I don't recall what our resolution was, if we ever came to a resolution on it. It was never resolved and the council tabled it subject to call. Okay. Um, so what, what, what uh, are we doing anything with regard to boats in yards? Are we just not, our code, our code offices just, excuse me, code officers just mm -hmm. not addressing that? Well, it depends. Uh, you know, the reason we brought it before the council before was because we had conflicting sections in the ordinance and we were trying to get that resolved. What we'll do, we won't write somebody up just for having an RV or a boat in their front yard. 
but if there is trash and debris or if it's not being maintained or it's dirty or something else that we can write it up for about that, then we'll do that. We'll address that aspect of it. Okay, last but not least, I've had some of my residents ask me what qualifies for roadworthy. I know that vehicles in driveways have to, or on the sides of roads have to be roadworthy. What are the parameters that determine a vehicle being roadworthy? Well, the way the ordinance addresses it is that uh, it's a violation when it is partially dismantled, junk, uh, flat tires, those kind of things. If it's if it's just ugly, that's not a right. violation. And we have a lot of people that have cars that, you know, one day I'm going to restore that car. And what we tell them is, all right, pull it around to the back of the house and cover it with a cover until that day. Just get it out of public view. And a lot of them do that. But uh, wrecked, partially dismantled, uh, obviously junked, or flat tires are usually the things that we will write a, a okay. junk vehicle up. Or, or abandoned. That's another word in the ordinance. Okay. okay. Thank you. Can I follow up on something you're talking about? Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah, of course. The problem we had before with the RVs was we had to stop people from living in them. They park them in the front yard. They did was renting them. Short term rentals again. That was the problem we had with not parking them so much in their yard. It was people had them plugged in and we use a lot of them. And that's what we got on put it. That's what they should have been doing. Right, and we and listen, if there's somebody living in an RV, whether it's in the front yard or the backyard, we, it write, it. we, we write it up. Yeah, we, uh, you can't live in it. You know, we have to monitor it sometimes because a neighbor will call in and say that they've got it plugged up. Well, we go out there and there's nobody living in it. They've just got it plugged up because they're going out of town in it that weekend and they want to get the air, check the air conditioning and everything else on. But if we find somebody living in it, then that's a clear violation and we go ahead and address it. That was our biggest problem. But then another problem is, how do we cancel a court case when we go through this process like Robert talking about and somebody been rolled up and then they have a court case and then it's all of a sudden it's canceled? Who has the right to cancel these court cases? Well, uh, it depends. Anything up to the court date, the judge allows me to either cancel it or to extend it if the people are, are working with us. Now, we, we do not cancel court cases if the person is is working with us i mean we'll give them an extension which she's allowed that to happen i had that conversation with her uh before she took over because the previous judge if we had a case and it was within a week of the court date uh, judge wilson would not let us intervene at all they had to go to court and they had to go through him to get it delayed or whatever but uh judge reddy said that if the if the issue is resolved, if the people have resolved the case even up to court time, that uh, we have the right to uh, not dismiss it, but to let them know that you know they don't have to appear for court. Now she will still uh, find them for um, either either failure to appear or she'll find them for court cost, which is what we've really been doing the past couple of uh, times is that she will find them and then she'll find them the court cost on top of that but uh, we I mean we don't arbitrarily cancel court cases we usually just grant extensions what are the effects that have when they don't show up like you told me before a lot of people just don't show up well what happens then is that she will try them in absentia and go ahead and find them if if we're if we can show that they actually were notified and that they refuse to accept the notification or whatever, then if they don't show up, then she'll go ahead and have a trial in absentia and find them based on that. And we've done that many times. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, Mr. Gines. Yeah, I just wanna comment a little bit on the garbage pickup. Um, after I gave a list, um, got mostly everything. So I want to thank them for going through the community and not only once, but at least twice. Um, the other thing is um, with the police department, um, I know that uh, Chief is not here. Um, could you follow up with Chief about Dewey Circle and the stop signs in that area? And the other thing I would like is um, on Bronze Street in Biloxi to check on speed bumps. 
I had a couple of complaints about speeders running through there, and they have a lot of children. And if they could possibly look at the idea of having uh, speed bumps uh, put in that area. What, what street? Uh, Braun, B-R-A-U-N, Braun Street. That's uh, in the Hope Six area, and there are a lot of children in that area. So just want to have that. And also thank the chief for uh, including me and giving me updates on uh, Friday's county issue. So make sure, tell them thank you in that area. And other than that, um, the striping on Division Street looks good. It looks like it's pretty much uh, about done. So I want to thank the mayor, Walt, for uh, hitting that. And have a few more fencing issues. Um, I'll get with Walt on that. So that concludes my report. Thank you. All right, I just have a couple of things. Um, on the garbage pickup, that ends this Friday, correct? Right now, our plan is to, to cut them off at the end of the week, with, okay. depending on how they do on those punch lists. All right. Um, on um, Jerry, on Tiffany Lane, right there on the corner, you know, we had discussed he come in and cleared all that out. I'm getting multiple complaints still. A lot of that stuff is still on the road. And how long does he have to pick that up? He was in court last week. Okay. Yeah. Um, they agreed to get it out of there. That's the agreement that he made with the judge. Okay. Is that they would go ahead and remove it, especially from the ditches. Uh, they had had a, a burn permit to burn some of the debris on the site, but when they started burning it, they exceeded the level of what the fire department had approved and they started getting complaints from the neighbors, so they had to stop the burn out there. But both the owner and the contractor were in court last week, and they've agreed to get it out. Okay, Got all it. right. Um, and I believe that's everything I have. We'll now move to um, public comments. We have 45 minutes. Each person is allotted three minutes. And when you come to the desk, if you will, please state your name and address and please sign in to the book on the desk. Do I have anyone on the left side of the room, my left side, your right side, that would like to make comments? Hi, I guess I'll go first. Yeah. All right. Do I just sit here? Yeah, just sit down, just repeat your name. and. Put your address, name and address in there. Uh, my name is uh, David Polanco, and last year I bought a, a duplex on St. Peter Street, and um, so far I put probably 50000 into the house uh, because it had been sitting and it was dilapidated since Katrina hit. So, I mean, literally the top was kind of falling apart. So rebuilt it, done a lot of work to it, um, and um, spent a lot of money on local businesses. I know they heard that, you know, none of that money comes to Biloxi, but I have been considering short-term rentals. If I was able to do a short-term rental, it would be agreeable to do some sort of uh, additional tax for the short-term rental. I mean, you have two completely different rental markets between um, short-term rentals and the casinos, and so, you know, you have a completely different type of person going from one to the other. Uh, Long-term rentals, the problem that I have with that is you get people with broken down cars, hoarding, um, all kinds of other issues where they're not reporting problems with the house, and so you don't get a chance to actually get in there and fix these issues, whereas on a short-term rental, it would be maintained between everybody's visit. So uh, 118 St. Peter is like one lot away from the beach, super close to the beach. I would love to do more work to it, but I might just sell it. <laughs> so you know, what's, that's no advantage to me. I would love to have a long-term investment where I come out and I have something that I can be proud of. Um, what I don't want is something that is just going to be dilapidated or not maintained by my tenant who would be taking care of the yard and everything else. But I've hired local contractors for all of the work that I've done, and so it is putting money into the economy to do this. And for me, it's an advantage. I'm from California originally because you know, if I'm spending money in Biloxi, I would much rather my taxes go to you guys instead of Governor Newsom. And so that's, that is a common um, theme that you're hearing from people from California. So I love this place, love coming out here, and uh, um, I would love to do more. 
And so if there was a short-term rental opportunity, that would give me a reason. Thank you. Anyone else on the left side of the room? All right. Anyone on the right side of the room? My right, your left. My name's James Foster. Uh, I'm here today applying for the short-term rental on Beach Boulevard, 1502. I've been operating short-term rentals for seven years in the city of Biloxi, and the only thing that comes out of it, everything's positive. I've never had problems with people renting my house and the police being called. I've never had anything like that. And as far as the taxes, I manage it myself. And on the state tax commission, when you sign up, you have to put the business address on there. So when it says Briarfield Avenue, Biloxi, Mississippi, that money goes straight to Biloxi. In 2019, Airbnb just released that they paid the state of Mississippi because they pay it for us. It was over a million dollars. I don't know how it works with the the real estate companies and how Biloxi gets the money through the state, but it's definitely something y'all need to check into. But I'm, I know mine goes straight to the Biloxi. And like I said, I've been doing it seven years. There's definitely a market for this in Biloxi. It gives tourists a different option. A lot of my vacation people, they want a bigger house. That's why I went with the beachfront house, because a lot of them want the bigger house. They want, a lot of them, I've had them come from Dallas, Detroit, Chicago, Atlanta, and they would come meet at my house. And it might be seven to 10 people staying there, but they, they can't do that at a hotel. They want to be together. Sometimes it's grandma and grandpa paying for it all to get the kids all together and the grandkids together. And, but it's been very good. And the only other thing, White House Pier, the park, I own a jet ski rental right there. And I know this summer's coming. I mean, it looks, I'm sitting there looking at that and it really looks bad down there. Those balls are just laying everywhere. You got uh, light poles laying over. And when the tourists come, I've been dealing with tourists for 40 years of my life. That's the only business I know is tourism. And they'll come straight to the beach and say, why isn't that clean up there? And I have to sit here and cover. And it makes us really look bad. We really need to get down there and get that lighthouse park cleaned up. There's still washouts in it. And when you did the new parking arrangements down there, they put up the fancy little posts with the ropes on them, and people ran them over over time. And that's the bad thing about doing stuff like that. You have to maintain it. And I'm it was sorry, Mr. Foster, your time is up. Thank you. Have a Thank good day. You. All right, anyone else on the right side of the room? Uh, my name is Tony Wallace. Please sign uh, in as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, my name is Tony Wallace. I was here uh, last city council meeting, and uh, you know I'm pleading again with you guys about uh, basically there has been some misinformation about situation that's going on at the Snyder Gym that I've been using for over 15 years, and. Uh, Snyder Gym has been a great asset to me and uh, several friends are involved in this nonprofit. And I have been falsely accused of uh, by someone at the Snyder Gym has been communicating with people up here uh, saying that I'm getting paid using this community gym 
uh, and using that excuse with no proof to eliminate, eliminate me from using the gym for free. I use this gym for my church, which is First Missionary Baptist Church in Gulfport, and I've used this church with kids that uh, uh, when I run basketball camps and then when it's off season, I use these same kids. Uh, I use that same gym with these kids. But for some reason, uh, uh, it has been misconstrued. I thought I, uh, I had a great conversation with the city attorney about how to alleviate this issue. But for some reason, I cannot get in contact with Sherry Bell to get her to point out who is saying that I'm getting paid when I'm clearly not and have never gotten paid for doing that. And they're using that to, to say that I'm a personal trainer and, and getting paid, therefore you can't do it. This rule just came up out of nowhere. I, for 15 years I've been using this gym. And now I can't get an answer. It's just, no, you can't do it. I got church, uh, church members that, that don't have fathers or whatever in the male figures in their son's life. I volunteer to do that now because of this rule, it has been eliminated. No one can come in there unless it's the father or the mother. But if I take the kid and say, shoot like Steph Curry and not Lonzo Ball, uh, it's not allowed. You understand? So I, I can't understand, I don't understand why uh, 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 this issue has came up. And I'm willing to talk to anyone about the details of this situation so we get to the bottom of it. I just can't figure it out. And I, and I believe it's personal. And the forethought of this rule not only applies in the Snyder gym, it also applies to soccer field, the baseball field, the uh, uh, tennis court. If you can't do it at the Snyder, train somebody how to swing the tennis racket properly or the baseball bat, that means you, mean you can't do it at the Snyder gym, teaching the kid how to shoot the basketball. They didn't think it through, and it's absolutely personal. And I would, I would please uh, ask y'all to uh, figure this out. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else on the left, the right, or the back of the room who would like to make any comments? All right, there's no one else. Citizens' comments are closed. We'll now move to the policy agenda. Let me see if you would read item A. Ordinance to authorize a change in zoning from A, agricultural, to RS 7.5 medium density, single family, for properties identified as a portion of three parcels fronting Shriners Boulevard, one parcel fronting Frank Hudson Road, and one fronting Jim Bird Road. All right, this was originally moved by Mr. Glavin and Mr. Lawrence. Is there any discussion? Oh, that'd be, uh, be on you. You have to tell what you think yes. on the... Yeah, I was, I was out whenever this was... Um, right, so that was the first reading. for you. I, I do have a couple of questions. I went to the public hearing um, at um, the, the code office. I do have a couple of questions. Um, the, and this isn't necessarily just about this property, but what happens if we rezone a piece of property and um, that pro the project that it's being rezoned for never happens? The rezoning would remain the same. <clears throat> so it would not, it, it would go back to what it originally was. No, the state law, you know, requires that when you change zoning that there's a change in the character of the neighborhood, a public need, or a mistake in the original zoning. Okay. And when you change zoning, you're attesting to the fact that one of those has occurred. Uh, you can't zone a piece of property with a time limit on it and then try to change it back because that's okay. considered contract zoning. That's illegal. Okay. All right. Um, my other question um, for Mr. Uh, Jones, Mr. Jones, right? Yes. Um, is how far off of Shriner Boulevard are the homes going to be? Yeah, you can come forward, please. Our, um, about a thousand feet. A thousand feet, and the woods in front of that, y'all aren't purchasing that, so it would not be seen from the road at all. At all. Okay, what about the backside? Um, I know that there's only one entrance, and that entrance, if I'm correct, will not be utilized. It'll be on Knox Box. Correct. And only for emergency situations. Is that correct? That is correct. And how far off of Jim Bird is that going to be? So um, on three sides, there's about a buffer 
for a thousand feet or so. Um, on the north west corner, it gets a little bit closer to those residences, but most of them have their houses really close to Jim Bird. So even between their house and our house is four or five hundred feet, I would say. Okay. Um, I think. Yeah, it's just that the only part that even comes close to any homes is the northwest section that where the blue lines kind of intersect right there. Um, there's a couple of houses right in that area. Okay. But everything else is at least a thousand feet basically from any road or major artery. Okay. All right. So basically you won't be able to see this subdivision unless you're in it. That's right. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So that's that's the only question I had at this time. Yeah. Um, once the plat comes up, you know, depending on drainage and things, we may have to make some adjustments or you know address some requests. But that's that's all I have for now. Of course. All right. Any other discussion? All right. I'll call for the question. All in favor? Six. Uh, move to item B. Ordinance amending section 216 and 311 of the Code of Ordinances. All right, this was moved by Mr. Glavin and Mr. Lawrence as well. Is there any discussion? That's all on you. And so everything, I know that there was some confusion. Well, you had a lot to do with it. So you was going in two weeks, see what happened? Yeah. So um, that has something to do with what you wanted to do. Well, order. this is just to, if, um, this is just to, we're required by law to, set the pay for the incoming administration and um, the council. And I know there was some confusion on Facebook uh, about this, but it's my understanding that everything is just remaining the same. We're just basically voting to keep everything like it is, correct? Yeah. Any other discussion? Call for the question. All in favor? 6 -0. All right, Next item. Ordinance amending chapter 13. <clears throat> Excuse me, by adding Article 4 pertaining to regulations for debt collection. All right, this originally was also moved by Mr. Lawrence and Mr. Glavin. Any discussion? Uh, Peter? They substituted it, so what did you legally do or what did you change? Uh, this, was, this was a change that was made in response to. Uh, Councilman Deming's point about giving some sort of appeal process to someone that's not satisfied at the hearing, and we've added that paragraph six. That's the change that's been made to state if uh, someone is not satisfied, they could utilize the appeal process that's that's provided by statute. So you uh, took care of the request by Robert Deming? That's correct. All right, you pleased with it? Yeah, it's exactly what I was looking for. Um, <clears throat> what, do you mind if I ask another question? No, no, that's right. The only other question I have now that we have the, the, the appeal process in there is the notice requirement. Um, I noticed that it requires the debtor to inform the city that they would request a hearing. Now, do we have a copy of the form that's actually going to be mailed? What I'm concerned with is, is the information on the notice going to adequately advise the debtor that they have to inform the city in order to receive that hearing. And I would suggest that maybe we just put it on the form, they write their name, address, email, all of that, and check a box that they do want a hearing so they can just mail that back. <clears throat> I'd like to make it as easy as possible um, to uh, allow people to have due process. Yep. We, we can definitely do that. And we generally would follow like the uh, Fair Debt Collection Act, those sort of things, a certain size typeface, you have to use a larger font sometimes. Right. So we're prepared to do all that. Okay, great, thank you. I have nothing further. All right, any other discussion? All in favor? Six, zero. And I'll move to item D. Resolution to grant conditional use for a short-term rental for property located at 107 St. George Avenue. We have a first. I'll second it. <clears throat> second. <laughs> All right. Oh, this was already moved. Any discussion? It? 
No discussion? Well, um, I just have one question for Mr. Foster. Is he still here? What's the blue building next to your structure? Is it? Okay. I was just curious. I saw it on Google Maps and I, there's a, a tree in front of it. Okay, thank you. That's really all I had. All right. Any other discussion? All right. All in favor? Six zero. We'll move to item E. Resolution granting minor subdivision final plat approval for property identified as 13130 Thomas Road. I'll make that motion. Second. All right. Second by Ms. Newman. Any discussion? All right, Jerry, the only, um, this is just basically taking a large piece of property, splitting it up three ways, right? All right. Call for the question. All in favor? Six to zero. We'll now move to item H. Resolution to approve a non-revolving line of credit not to exceed $10 million to defray the cost of Hurricane Zeta cleanup and recovery. So I'll move it. All right, I'll second that. First up, Mr. Lawrence. Discussion? Yeah, for, for, uh, how's this money going to be replaced? Okay. Basically, uh, uh, Mike mentioned the $3 million. We'll actually pull down $3 million uh, as we uh, pay the contractors and expenses of uh, Zeta cleanup, uh, draw down, pay the, the, the vendor, submit that, that pay app to MEMA FEMA and pay that part of the back when we get reimbursed. It's a, you know, it could be four, five, six, seven month project pro, you know, process to get it back. But we'll do it almost like our FEMA projects for North. You pay the vendor, you get the cancel check, submit it. Tanya will submit that for reimbursement. As it comes back, we pay down that line of credit. I don't don't expect ten million. We just ten million out as a, as a number, but uh, you know again the biggest hit you're going to see about three four, three point four five million as far as debris cleanup for Zeta. But there's a number of other things that we've done that will be used. We're not going to tap our cash flow. This is going to be as in business. You know, a line of credit, use it where you need it. So we won't be uh, concerned with cash flow, except for you know, and, and the interest was less than a percent. So I think it was like six. Uh, 0.68, it was an unbelievable uh, number. So uh, the only thing that we'll incur, again, most of the Zeta projects will be 75% uh, FEMA, 12.5% uh, MEMA, and the rest us. I, I think that's correct in, in, in the distribution. So that's what we're uh, uh, planning on how we'll, we will recover and pay the vendors that have been cleaning up for Zeta. So the, the last question is, as soon as we get this money, we're going to eliminate this bond, or are you going to carry yeah, the bond? Yeah, it's not a bond. Money it, back onto the bond yeah, as soon as you get you it. Know, basically, the money will be draw, drawn down by uh, uh, docket by docket, okay? And so we'll pay that docket rate related to uh, Zeta expenses, submit that after the, the checks have been run back, and then apply for the reimbursement through MEMA, then FEMA. So if you don't use the whole money like the... The money will be held in a separate account at People's Bank. Right. It, and, well, and, and, and we're, we're only going to use it for reimbursement. Yeah. It will only be, as we accrue the expense, we'll pay it through the docket, no. have the money drawn down to pay the docket, then it's, it's cleared. So but, it's going to be a, a transitional thing. But what would it cost the city? What would it oh, about 0. 0.68. What was the expense? 0.68 percent right. is the interest rate listed in the resolution. All right. Thank you. All right, any other? Mr. Tisdale? One other question. So in, in reading this, if I understand correctly, these are, um, this will be used to put to pay hurricane Zeta-related Zeta expenses only. Right. That's it. You, you might use 10 million, you may I, not use 10 I, million. I, yeah, I don't okay. expect 10 million. 10 million is a good round number. But basically, it's a grand anticipation. That's note it. In, uh, That's it, exactly. Okay, thank you. All right, if there's no more discussion, I'll call for the question. All in favor? Six to zero. We'll now move to the consent agenda. And we'll make that motion. All right, I have a first by Mr. Tisdale, second by Mr. Lawrence. Uh, we'll s start with Mr. Tisdale. Is there any questions or discussion about any of the items? 
Uh, yeah, just just one item. Um, it's item W, resolution accepting certificate of substantial completion for the standard form of agreement with Saunders Construction for Capital Project 1000, which is the West Biloxi Boardwalk. They had uh, a punch list. I think there were about 58 or 60 items. I would assume all everything on the punch list has been done. Would that be correct? If all those items been That's completed, correct, sir. And this allows us, the substantial completion allows us to release their retainage. Okay. That's the only question I had. Thank you. All right, Mr. Lawrence. Down at uh, the mic on O, like an opposite. <laughs> I was reading through that. They had one of these 45 cents mistake, or what are the 45 cents in there? What we're doing is, and we're constantly doing this with you, and that, that is whenever we see a, a slight change in the actual actual number, we, we come back and correct the record. So it's just, it's just a correction. Ha, yeah, it has to do with the, the tr changeover from 20 to 21. Uh -huh. It's just a matter of balancing the capital project budget, which we continue to do as, as a, there needs to be a balance. So, and, and you're right, it's a very small number. I thought, and the other thing, we're not, we're not making money or. Well, that's 45 cents, huh? Mm -hmm. and a cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> the 58,000 is correct. The increase and decrease of the 58,000 in the next part of the same resolution. I don't have it in front of me. I that could was look. What we did <clears> the last time from uh, when it, the 58,000. 58,000 was the correction last for moving the money from. October from September expenses. In, into, <laughs> October, yes. into October, yeah. yeah. Diana covered that last yeah, week. Yeah, I think so. Just making sure we slick and all prices are correct and the numbers are right. They're doing a good job at that point. The next one on the, the taxi, the motor vehicle behind, is that still the 33000 It's the same? It's the same amount as in the budget that we passed. We, what we do at the end, beginning of the year, we, 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 we uh, approve of a paying, paying them, and then we don't come back to council the other three quarters. We just pay the, the quarterly amount. We don't come back to you each three months for another another bucket. This is this is the full amount. That's probably one of the bad things we do in the city to pay that, because most of y'all can remember about three years and nothing but a war every Tuesday fighting that thing here. And since this man has taken it over and we set this up this way, <clears throat> we have really not many problems. Everything's handled well. So that's a, that's a great thirty-three thousand that we spend. Every one of those taxis is annually inspected. Every one of those taxis, the drivers that are driving it are background checked. Uh, I, I mean, so it's just something we don't want to have to do ourselves. And there's the three cities involved, the Iberville, Biloxi, and Gulfport. We split it up based on the percentage of taxi fares to each city. The problem we had, I don't think he was around is when they were denying the people that they couldn't drive a taxi and they would come up here to the city council and complain about it. We had to have four or five policemen around there. That, that wasn't pretty. <laughs> that was pretty ugly. It's the greatest thing we've done with this taxi thing, I'm telling you. Keep them out of here. They do a good job with that. Not mentioned, of course, is that all the Ubers and the Lyfts are not inspected. Mm -hmm. They're not background checked. And they're not paying any tax to us. Yeah, that's great. And the other thing, I finally got all this stuff on Circle Park set up. So we're going to repair Circle Park, fix up the tennis court, fix up the plate. It's going to be great. It's all that's on here today. And Beverly Martin said, Supervisor with Ward 1, willing to work with the city, help do this stuff. So we're going to turn that into a nice park. Thank you. Mike, can I just follow up on that? Um, just out of curiosity, can you get um, can you contact the director of the uh, Motor Vehicle for Hire Authority and ask him what the inventory of taxis is? I'm just curious to know how many have have fled to Lyft and Uber once the state took over the administration of regulations for Lyft and Uber. I know numerous of them left. Uh, if you would just ask him what that inventory is of of operating Will taxis. Do. Are there any other items you'd like to address, Mr. Denny? 
Um, yeah, CC, Charlie Charlie. Um, it's the Sanger Theater um, Capital Projects. This is a change order. At the, the originally, we were only sealing three sides of the building, and this adds to the front, if you will, the west side to the building. Now, there's still some other things that we'll have to change order in. We need to get the canopy fixed. We need to have the the the, the fancy sign the fixed, and some doors that, that we want to get some upgraded doors and so forth. Those are all change orders you'll see in the future. And it reminds me it reminds me of that Tom Hanks movie Money Pit. Mm. We should keep pouring money into this thing. Mm. That's all I have. We respectfully disagree. All right, <laughs> Ms. Newman, do you have any items? Mr. Gines? Yes, um, I had some questions uh, concerning CC also. Um, I saw the new HVAC units up there. Got an eye for HVAC units. Um, what, what's the time limit on completing that phase? I believe it. I believe the, cha the change order has got the days in it. Uh, April 24th April. I think is the new completion date. Okay. <laughs> I just don't have it in front of me. But I'll, I'll depend on Professor <laughs> Tisdale okay. that it's April right now. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Just the, uh, the question I thought you were going to ask me is the one I asked the, them today, and that is, have anybody turned on those air conditioners to see if they work? I'll take care of that part. <laughs> <laughs> They're all brand new roof mounted air yes, conditioners. They look good. They look good up there. Any other questions, Mr. Gunns? And that concludes mine. Okay. Um, I have a couple um, questions. On S and T, it says we're closing out that project. Um, I know that we have another two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's yeah. in the budget. But Councilman, for that. We're, we're, what we're just doing is closing out the one because it's a different, yeah. a different um, grant, and and then we'll. And the other project, the new project, is still there. So we're not actually closing the project. We're just actually closing the grant, the grant. with the, with the uh, DMR. Correct. Okay. So we won't have to pay for remobilization no. and all that kind no. of stuff in the no, and as next you know, phases. Um, some of the other ads, we're we're not going with the same company. Okay. We're we're you're you know we're going to different contractors to do the individual things like the basketball court, the dog walk, um, the, the uh, fancy. Porta potty house. Yeah. Pickle pot. Okay. All right. Yeah, that, that was my main thing. I just didn't want unnecessary costs by closing mm -hmm. and then have to open it back up. And then on CC, um, the, where is that funding coming from on the, um, to those additional, is that it, from it's our? In, it's in the project. It's, it's already in the project. So. Okay. So it's no additional right. funds. Okay. So as you re remember, we had, we had $2 million of our own money and $2 million of grant money. So we're spending the grant money now. Our money's spent, now we're spending the grant money. Yeah. All right. I have one more thing. All right, George. Uh, Susan's pictures are here. She flew in off vacation to make sure anything, any questions y'all want to ask about the CDBG money. Well, Susan's pictures flew in from vacation to answer all the questions. <laughs> 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 Short term, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's in trouble. <laughs> All right. There's no other questions. Um, we'll call for the vote. All in favor? Okay, it's 6 0, and then we'll start with your exceptions. Paul and Charlie. Paul and Charlie, Charlie. Any other exceptions? I abstain from P, is in Paul. Okay. And. Dixie is abstaining from P. Any P is in Paul. Correct. Any other exceptions? All right. We'll now move to the code enforcement hearings. Mr. Krill. Item A on the agenda. RW Development LLC, 105 McDonald Avenue. This was a 30-day extension on December the 15th. That case has been resolved. All right. Being there's no others, we will close. I'll make that motion. Enforcements. Say that again? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All right. Second. And um, all in favor? 
Right, six seven. Yeah. 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 Correct. And now we'll move to the routine agenda. I have a motion. Mm -hmm. I, do we move to routine? Okay. Routine agenda. Correct. No. No, I think they, they moved, which we already. Oh, yeah, we I, I got real excited. Okay. And was a step ahead. I think that was the routine that he moved. <laughs> okay, so you moved it before. Okay, gotcha. Felix was right, right behind right. me. So we're waiting on George now. Okay. <laughs> George, <laughs> any questions? Yeah, we got all, everybody here. Who got money for us? <laughs> Paul? Oh, like, Mike? Oh. Popo? <laughs> We received $1.465 million from NEMA last Friday, and we have another $2 million that's in the pipeline to be coming towards us. I said, keep up the good work. We'll take all the nickels we can get. Popo spends them, you know? <laughs> that's right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. I'll call for the question. All in favor? Do I have a motion to recess? Moved. Second. All, right. all in favor? All right. We're recessing. Jimmy, can I turn the lights up? <laughs>